Hay que comenzar diciendo que es un privilegio tener a Mr. Michael Fulan en la UNED, en nuestra universidad. Tiene una importante carrera docente en la Universidad de Toronto, ha sido decano del Instituto de Estudios Educativos de Ontario en Canadá, tiene la Orden de Canadá y doctorados honoris causa en universidades de todo el mundo. El profesor Fulan es también un autor muy prolífico y ha sido galardonado con libros importantísimos. Hoy nos va a presentar un libro muy especial. Este libro y también lo que antecede a este libro, que son otros que tienen mucha relación. El libro que vamos a presentar hoy se llama Nuance, se llama El matiz en español y está publicado y editado por la editorial Morata. Lo primero, welcome, bienvenido a nuestro país y también a nuestra universidad, Mr. Fulan. Ok, um, thank you very much. Señor Fulan, el liderazgo está muy presente en su trabajo, pero en su libro El Matiz, ¿qué es el liderazgo? Uh, the book El Matiz, o uh, Nuance, which is uh, about leadership, it's not only the formal leaders, it's whoever could be teacher leaders, so it covers a different kind of leadership. And the work that I've been doing with around the world as you referred to, and with other people on our team, is very much um, inside schools, what I would say more about practice than it is about theory, although it fits theory. So we are working with uh, a lot of teachers and schools in uh, many countries. And the, the emphasis on nuance is to recognize that in order for success to happen, in the future, in the complex times we have, you have to have leaders who can cause the group to work together. El señor Fulan nos dice que precisamente el matiz es un libro sobre liderazgo. Un liderazgo no solo formal, un liderazgo no solo formal, sino un liderazgo para todos, también para los profesores. Es un trabajo que ha realizado por todo el mundo, dentro de las escuelas principalmente. Se trata más de práctica que de teoría. Trabajan además con profesores, con alumnos, y el énfasis del matiz para lograr el éxito en un futuro y en estos tiempos difíciles es que los líderes consigan coexionar al grupo. Según el matiz, según Nions, la educación radicalmente transformada es desde luego nuestra mejor esperanza. Este último libro permite viajar al pasado para entender también el futuro. Nos dice que otra educación es posible, que hay esperanza. Nions está relacionado con la evolución humana. Empieza con la práctica, desde un viaje a la teoría, predecir menos, experimentar más. No hay duda de que todas estas son ideas inspiradoras. También nos habla dentro de su libro, pero también de otros relacionados, de la gran importancia del liderazgo. ¿Es esto así, Mr. Fulan? Uh, so, nuance, uh, even in English, is not a clear concept because it means that you look beneath the surface. So, uh, it's, a, it's a, a request for leaders to be more involved with the people that they work with so that they can get inside the culture and below the surface, if, if I uh, and put it that way. And so this is very much related to the fact that society now is much more complex in the last uh, 10 years, uh, very com uh, 20 years. Very complex because uh, now uh, there's climate change, there's conflict in the world, education, there's jo the jobs for the future is not clear, technology is unpredictable. So there's a lot of ambiguity Uh, uh, currently about educational change. This means that leaders have to be learners because things are changing all the time. So they have to help the students and, their, and the teachers that they work with uh, learn about things that are very complex and things that also are very negative sometimes and how to, how to make the student today a, a better learner, how to make the teachers better teachers Uh, is very much part of this uh, transition we're in as human, human evolution, let's call it, wh which has now become uh, 
much more dynamic in the last uh, 20 years because of the things I mentioned, the technology, the complexity, all of those things. So it calls for a different kind of leadership. Es curioso lo que nos dice el señor Fulan porque viene a decir que cada vez el aprendizaje es más complejo, que para ser líder también hay que ser aprendiz. Es como si tuviéramos en una línea recta en los dos lados y tienes que ser líder y aprendiz casi al mismo tiempo que hay problemas ahora mismo tecnológicos que no había antes, como por ejemplo también el cambio climático que está ahí y que los alumnos y los líderes deben manejar. Y de lo que nos habla el profesor Fulan es de una complejidad, una complejidad que a veces es hasta sencilla, precisamente por eso. Me gustaría también decir que la palabra matiz, neons, es una palabra muy hermosa en español. Es una palabra que nuestro diccionario describe como un pequeño rasgo perceptible que da un carácter determinado. En su último libro nos dice que es bueno ver el todo, pero que también es necesario detenerse en los diferentes elementos. Es decir, que hay que ver el detalle. Podemos ver el bosque, pero también hay que ver cada árbol, lo grande y lo pequeño. Lo micro como una mejora de lo local y lo macro como un cambio de tendencia a la desigualdad social, los grandes y los pequeños conceptos. Es decir, que hay que ver el todo, pero también hay que detenerse en las partes. ¿Eso es el matiz? So, I want to actually start with students, then talk about leaders, because now the education that we are, we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but the education that we are um, developing with students is called uh, Engage the World, Change the World. So it says about students that uh, they need to be not in the classroom only studying the textbook. They need to be uh, looking at the community and looking at um, uh, how society is developing. So that the student role is very different. This means then the teacher and the leader have to change their roles because they have to be able to uh, help the students. And we use, I use in nuance the seeing the details, but also the big picture, the macro, you said, referred to. And so uh, you have to be able to, uh, uh, we have a key phrase for leadership, they need to participate as learners with uh, teachers and, uh, and students. They will have ideas for leadership, that's good, but in addition to that, they have to keep learning because the, the, the society keeps changing. And it's also a big change for students compared to the way they used to learn, sitting at desk, That's not, not the case anymore. It's a very big change for teachers because now, instead of just being inside your own classroom, we, in our work, see that it's necessary for teachers to work with other teachers uh, together in order to get the results that we're talking about. So this is a big change uh, at every level, at the level of detail in the classroom, in the school, at the level of schools maybe working together, and at the level of where's policy. So it's a big change up here, looking at the whole thing, and it's a big change in the detail, so that the leader, El Matiz, has to be uh, able to uh, relate to both levels and also connect them. Nos dice también entonces que hay que ver lo grande, hay que ver lo pequeño, hay que verlo casi desde arriba, como si fuera un prisma. Y también que el aprendizaje no está solamente en las aulas, que se aprende dentro y se aprende fuera. Y deben aprender todos, debe aprender el profesor, y debe aprender el estudiante también. Por lo tanto, es una labor compleja en un mundo también complejo, pero los mundos un poco siempre han sido complejos. Hay una figura que usted nombra, y nombra además como un ejemplo, me refiero a Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci es la figura que nos da un poco como ejemplo, porque encarna estas cualidades que se necesitan para entender estos sistemas complejos. Y Leonardo no ha vivido hoy. Leonardo es una figura antigua. La participación, además, hasta el punto de crear, de estar, más que de crear en lo correcto, lo que usted llama determinación conjunta. Es un aprendizaje continuo, también o sobre todo en lo que usted llama adaptabilidad, responsabilidad, no solo la del responsable, es decir, no solo la del líder, la del jefe, la que está y el que está en el sillón, sino que este liderazgo, esta responsabilidad sería compartida. ¿Serían estos conceptos básicos para entender lo que es el matiz? 
So uh, when I was writing the book uh, a, a year ago, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was, it was his 600th anniversary from his death. And so there was a, uh, many news stories on Leonardo. And uh, one of the uh, biographers, uh, Walter Isaacson, who had done a biography on Steve Jobs, uh, Apple founder, and uh, several other big, um, d d decided to do one on Leonardo da Vinci. So he went back to um, look, and it's a very great story for that. And for it's quite also amazing because Leonardo made lots of notes uh, by hand of what he was doing. Something like 1,700 pages survived over 600 years, which is uh, incredible, actually. And so uh, Isaacson had a chance to look at it. And Leonardo, when he described his work, and I'll tell you in a moment what, what that description is, it also was what I saw in the best leaders that we were working with in different countries, whether they were at the school level or the regional level or the state level. And this is what he said about his work. He said, uh, I like to experience and experiment. So those two words, experience and experiment. In other words, he wasn't like up studying theory. He said, I want to see how something works and I want to get inside the detail, but then I want to create something new out of that new knowledge. Not stay with the old knowledge, but create new. So he created, as we now know, uh, many things, uh, Mona Lisa being the famous one, but also other paintings, The Last Supper. Uh, he, he anticipated the helicopter being invented. He did bridges. He made lots of inventions. Efectivamente, 600 años nos contemplan y sigue siendo pues, mm. el máximo, la referencia en muchas cosas. Porque él lo que hacía era pensar, imaginar, pero a la vez luego experimentaba. Es decir, luego lo hacía, lo creaba. Es un proceso muy, muy complejo y es un poco lo que nos dice el profesor Fulán que se debe hacer. Es decir, construir el conocimiento y luego llevarlo a la práctica, como hacía Leonardo, y además a todos los niveles, desde el nivel local a los máximos niveles, al nivel estatal. Crear, y crear es una cosa bastante complicada, diría yo. Podríamos también decir que en su libro, Professional Capital, este concepto, estos conceptos de los que nos habla, son el resultado del capital humano, el capital social y también el capital de decisión. ¿El capital profesional está relacionado con el matiz? Mm -hmm. ¿De qué manera está relacionado? So, yes, the, um, the leadership in el matiz, uh, one way of uh, considering it is that this leadership is developing professional capital of teachers, which um, is different than uh, the, you know, the uh, earlier approach. And so I want to be very specific about this. Mostly in the past, leaders and others have focused on what we call human capital, which is the individual. So the individual, we have to get the best teachers, the best school leaders. Uh, but now we know that the individual is only one piece. A second piece is the group. And so now when you put the group in, this is where nuance comes in because for a leader to develop the group is very hard to do because individuals uh, develop. We also know that when you develop the group effectively, it causes greater learning. So if we think of even Spain now, uh, the history of all the teaching profession, but certainly the history in Spain, has been usually one teacher in the classroom with a group of students. So isolation, teacher by teacher. And that system of teaching is no longer the most effective, teachers teaching alone. They have to be uh, learning from each other, and the leaders have to help that learning. So this is where now we're back to nuance. The nuance is the ability of the leader and the teachers together to figure out what's the best way of working together inside the school to get the best results for the students they have. So that's, that's just inside the school. Uh, the new work also means schools, learn from, schools connect from each other. So schools now are networks. This is now something, and these are starting in Spain, but they don't have a long history. So the nuanced leadership now is we take uh, the three capitals, the individual, yes, teachers have to get better, 
And then secondly, the group has to get better on the social capital. And then the third one is very important, which is decisional capital, and that is how do they use uh, assessment of uh, student learning to make decisions to improve the learning. So this comes together, all three, all three capitals are important. One last point is that sometimes in, in some countries, I'll just take the ones I know, but if we take the United States, we talk in the book about business capital. And business capital is when leaders say, oh, teachers, all we need is somebody in the classroom, so we won't pay them very much. We, will, uh, we, we can interchange them because they're, uh, they're not so important. So they treat it as a business expense rather than an investment of human and social and decisional capital. So this is uh, our, our image of professional capital is also a criticism of the tendency, again, I stick with the United States, of having um, a business capital mindset where you only try to get the cheapest possible, the most inexpensive way of having teachers. En realidad, volvemos un poco a este tema del individuo, por un lado, del grupo, por otro, y también de mejorar ese aprendizaje. Un poco lo que nos dice también el profesor Fulán es que ni el profesor debe estar aquí separado, ni el alumno separado, sino tienen que actuar e interactuar mejor y que a veces los liderazgos también cambian. Puede ser líder el profesor y puede ser líder el alumno y empoderarse, pero que el individuo y el grupo son importantes y esta interacción también es importante. No sé si en todos los países del mundo, luego me lo dirá al final, es igual. Ahora que está en España me gustaría pues, que nos hiciera ese pequeño guiño en nuestro país. Pero antes me gustaría seguir con esto del aprendizaje. Porque el aprendizaje en profundidad, entendido en profundidad, es un concepto bastante difícil. Porque no se trata solo de conocer, de saber cosas. Es más que saber cosas. ¿Cómo lo definiría? Okay, so um, uh, yesterday we were in the um, exhibition of the Instituto Escuela. Uh, so this was a school in, uh, started in uh, 1919, I think, and uh, was closed uh, in 1936 because of the, the war, the Civil War, and then the, and that. So they closed down, but they captured what, the activities of what was happening. And it turns out that this uh, kind of teaching The, the students and the teachers' roles were very different than we see in the regular classroom. These uh, students and teachers were working together. They would work with their hands. They would uh, create things in, uh, you know, in the garden. And there would be very much uh, what we now call deep learning. So now that disappeared, or, or at least was closed down in 1936. And now in, um, in our work we call deep learning, We have done uh, similar things. Uh, obviously, it's a very a little different in 2019 than in, uh, in, in, say, 1920. What's not different is now the students, instead of sitting in classrooms in the row, studying memory work and knowledge and, and writing exams, they are participating with each other and the teacher. So you need leaders who can help the students change their role to more participation, less sitting down only, and, and uh, more... Um, More, uh, we have a phrase that uh, that comes from this work. It's called uh, um, what, "What is uh, what is quality learning?" And quality learning is, I think, uh, good learning that sticks with you the rest of your life. If I hope that phrase translates okay, so that uh, learning that sticks with you a long time. Uh, it turns out, in pedagogical terms, if I study a, a book and then I write a, a test. I don't, I don't retain that very long. I can memorize it and I can do well on the test, but if you give me the same test four months later, I won't be, do very well. But if I'm working with a group of students and we create something, and we create, uh, uh, I showed a video yesterday where students in Uruguay were creating uh, how to save water from the sky uh, and uh, retain it as drinking water, so it had to be figured out how to get it from the uh, rooftop into uh, uh, good, quality water. And when the students do that, they remember that all the time. And so they have a way, a new way of learning. So this is the change that we call deep learning. Bueno, lo que nos viene a decir también el profesor Fulán es que nada es del todo nuevo bajo el sol y que ayer justamente pues estuvo en el Instituto Escuela, algo que se creó hace 100 años, en 1919, y allí 
pudo ver ejemplos claros de esta participación, de cómo el profesor trabajaba junto al alumno, cómo interactuaba y cómo esta institución libre de enseñanza, la institución libre de enseñanza es muy importante en nuestro país y lo ha sido y ahora pues hay una reivindicación todavía mayor y Mr. Fulano nos dicen que un poco es de alguna manera volver o hacer eso mismo. Bueno, claro, con los tiempos en los que vivimos la tecnología es diferente, hay cosas que hay que contemplar muy diferentes, vivimos en un mundo, decíamos al principio, el cambio climático y otras cosas que hacen que nos tengamos que percatar de que este mundo cambia y tenemos que cambiar con él. Pero en todo caso, cuando nos habla de, de todo ello, habla también de una serie de competencias. Competencias que son competencias globales. Competencias como serían el carácter, la ciudadanía, uh -huh. la colaboración, la comunicación, la creatividad, porque hay que crear, dice que los alumnos deben crear, y también el uh -huh. pensamiento crítico para saber y diferenciar lo que puede ser estar bien y lo que puede estar mal. ¿Son estas las competencias globales más importantes? Yeah. So we have, um, if you take traditional schooling and the exams, uh, quite often um, the people, the, the exam is about students' knowledge. Uh, when, you know, what year was the Second World War and who were the major pla um, participants in it and what happened on this. So it's all factual, I'm going to say. But that's not, uh, to have factual knowledge is not going to m make you a very effective uh, citizen now or a person that can raise in life because on the factual, you can get all the facts you want from Google and you just do that. So the factual isn't important. What's important is how to live. And we have uh, figured out by looking at the combination that the way to think about how to live is to say what are the key competencies that a student who graduates should have to be uh, effective in life or to survive in life. And uh, these uh, key competencies, uh, there are six. They pretty much are comprehensive, I think. And they, they are character, which is really self-directed learning. They're citizenship, how to be a good citizen in the world, uh, from the, w even when you're a student. Uh, the, then uh, collaboration, how do you work in teams? Communication, how do you uh, be able to talk and write and, and so forth? Creativity, how do you create new things that are um, valuable? And uh, critical thinking, how can you uh, think about uh, events? So these six C's, and we have in our, our uh, book now, that's uh, called the Deep Learning Book, uh, examples of what this looks like. This means that the uh, students who graduate with the six C's, they become two things. One is they can cope with complex life, and the second is they can contribute to life getting better because of their leadership. And these competencies are also quite often what employers want. If you ask business people, what do you want from a graduate st uh, student graduating, they'll say, I want teamwork, I want problem solving, I want creativity, I want people to be able to communicate. So this is all about uh, uh, capacities to live in a complex world that's only going to get more complex. Estas competencias, estas capacidades son muy importantes, pero yo creo que ya durante dos o tres veces a lo largo de la entrevista nos ha dicho algo que yo casi lo pondría como titular, si en radio hubiera un titular, y lo pondré si puedo. Lo importante es aprender a vivir. Y un poco todo lo que venimos diciendo, ese aprendizaje, bueno, ese aprendizaje y estas competencias nos ayudan a aprender a a vivir. El liderazgo también está presente en las obras que ya estamos mencionando y también en su libro La dirección escolar. Usted ha hablado recientemente de ello y ante invitados además de peso en el campo de la educación. Un líder en la comunidad educativa que probablemente este liderazgo sea extrapolable a cualquier actividad humana, a cualquier otra actividad humana. Y nos dice que estemos atentos también al matiz. Y nos da ejemplos, además, que nos ilustran. Quizá para terminar esta entrevista, en estos tiempos de cambios muy, muy rápidos, ¿cuál es su opinión? ¿Cuáles son las claves para integrar, para motivar, para educar? En definitiva, para crear mejores sociedades. Ok. En uh, Matisse's book, uh, I... Um... 
identify three qualities of the leadership. The one is called uh, joint determination is the English word. Uh, so what this means is the leader has to work with the group to figure out what should be our innovation, what should be our direction. Before leaders, uh, we think of, oh, the leader has the vision, they just make, make, make it happen. Now we say you have to create the vision. You have to have good ideas as a leader, but in order to get them started, you have to interact with the people you're working with so that there's some ownership uh, about the new idea. So that's one of three things, joint determination. The second thing is adaptability, because now you can't plan it, plan uh, something, and then expect it just to go step one, step two, step three. Lots of things happen during implementation that you have to be able to adapt. And uh, again, Leonardo da Vinci, a great adapter. Uh, all of our, uh, 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 and then you can predict from the complexity of life that even if you have a plan, things will change during the next year as you do it. So you have to be ready to adapt. And then the third is to uh, how to figure out what we, accountability, which is a very complex term because governments, their approach to accountability is let's be specific and if it doesn't happen, we're going to punish the people or reward them. And, and it's much more complicated than that. We have to have the group who uh, feels a sense of accountability to themselves and to the outside and therefore are working on, we know that it works, we described it. All of the examples of nuance in the book are leaders that have these three qualities of joint determination with the group, adaptability uh, as they problem solve during the uh, process, and then ability to be uh, accountable and to relate to well, whether it's parents in the community or the government uh, about what they've been doing. So this is, uh, this is the, the 10 cases I have in the book are all examples of what this looks like. Adaptarse a los cambios, adaptarse a las necesidades que va a haber, rendir cuentas, estar preparándonos precisamente para eso, para que los cambios son muy, muy rápidos. Es lo que nos dice el profesor Fulan. Me gustaría acabar pues, con nuestro país, un pequeño mm. pensamiento sobre España y sobre la educación en España. I don't know enough about the, uh culture in Spain. I've only been here a few times and I haven't studied in the, you know, what those schools look like. Uh, but we know, for example, from OECD, when they ask uh, in one of their surveys, they ask different teachers in different countries, how much do you work with, uh, cooperate with other teachers in your work? We know that Spain has, uh, I think, uh, almost 80% said they didn't do much uh, working with other teachers. So that's We know, uh, we know that when teachers work together, if they do it the right way, if the leadership is good, it gets much better results with the students. And the more complex the, that world becomes, the more uh, important it is for teachers to work together. And uh, I would say that if, uh, it seems from this looking at this that a priority should be uh, to figure out with incentives and development how teachers can work more together inside their school and how they can learn from each other across schools and networks. Colaborar juntos, prepararse, esto es lo más importante. Lo más importante desde ya y también más allá. Y en nuestro país y en todos los países tenemos retos importantes, muchos retos importantes, muchos cambios importantes y hay que ponerse ya a ello. Muchísimas gracias, profesor Fulan. Thank But, you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. This is very good questions. I enjoyed the conversation and I hope uh, your audience uh, likes this uh, interview as well. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Adios.